Whoops. There we go. Hi. <laughs> uh, our lessons, uh, both of our lessons this month will be taught by Marsha as Erin is still recuperating from having her baby and Marsha very graciously stepped up to give her some time off. Uh, the first lesson is Prayers of Faith uh, by President Irene that will be taught on August 9th by Marsha. Enjoy the lessons. I, I love them and I hope that you're taking advantage of listening to them. A lot of words don't do this. And I think it not only keeps us closer together as sisters, but it brings a spirit in our home and helps in our lives. Thank you. Bye. Hello, sisters. I miss you guys. I haven't seen so many of you in so long. Uh, I miss our camaraderie and friendship and just being with girlfriends. Is, it's hard not to see you guys. Um, our August theme this month that we're talking about is strengthen our families and the scriptures are filled with ways to teach us how to strengthen our families there are so many examples in our scriptures um, but specifically sister thomas in a 2002 general conference talk focuses on three areas and to use to strengthen our families the first one is to nurture as women we are we nurture naturally we're born with the ability to um just love and cuddle babies and talk and play with little chilled toddlers it gets a little more hairy as they get older but we are born with a nurturing spirit and to nurture means to support encourage nourish and love and just ask yourself sisters are we doing this in our families in our daily grind as we um get busy doing more and more and school starts and maybe you're homeschooling which is even more of uh, effort and takes more of our time stop and think about how are am i nurturing each individual member of my family the second area is sacrifice as moms we naturally sacrifice especially our time um, this again as we think about the scriptures and the savior he, of course, sacrificed the, his life for us. So our sacrifice pales in comparison to that. And sometimes, um, again, as we get in the daily grind of living and, and teaching and bringing up our kids and training a husband, we, um, we forget that sacrifice is a blessing. Sometimes we get bogged down in the day-to-day -day and we start to resent our time that we give and we need to concentrate and realize that sacrificing for our families is a blessing the third thing that sister thomas focuses on is prayer this seems like a no-brainer but um, prayer must be a constant daily part of our lives prayer will protect you from the adversary give you peace and help your family to love each other so when things are the hairiest and everybody's in a bad mood or you're in a bad mood or the toddlers having a meltdown um, <clears throat> prayer is the answer it's one of those things that uh, I can't think of the how that talk that saying goes but when you need it the most is when you least want to do it that's when you need to do it <laughs> get down on your knees and pray and just ask for help ask for the spirit ask for calm and peace and it'll it will help whatever struggles you have you can take to heavenly father and he will he will help you and give you answers elder hale stated that strengthening our families is our sacred duty as parents each of our children and our husbands comes to earth with varying gifts and talents uh, think about each of your member of your family and what their gifts and talents are teach the scriptures to the children so that they can learn and strengthen themselves as we come uh, closer and closer to the last days um, we need our families to be strong so that they will not stray it is a challenge but is also a blessing it is the main goal of our lives is to strengthen our families so that we can all be together it, um, after we part this life sisters i i know it's a struggle it day to day is a struggle i understand that i've been there 
remember these three things, nurture, sacrifice, and prayer, as we strive to strengthen our families. My daughter has a ritual when they have dinner every night that they talk about their roses and thorns. And each individual member of the family gets to talk about what was good about their day and what was bad about their day. And it sparks so much conversation. And it's interesting to see how the older children with their experiences um, are able to help the younger kids just naturally. She doesn't really need to say anything at all. And uh, so maybe this will help you, the little example will help you strengthen your family. Um, everybody has their own thing that they do and that is working and sometimes you try something and it doesn't work. But prayer will never let you down as, as a family and individually. And I leave this with you sisters in the name of Jesus Christ as we work to strengthen our families I pray that the Spirit will be with you individually and collectively in your homes. Thank you, and I love you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Good morning, sisters. Today our lesson is by President Henry B. Eyring, Prayers of Faith. As we pray in faith, we become a vital part in the Lord's work as he prepares the world for his second coming. Um, President Eyring just seems so far above me and my life that it's sometimes it's hard to teach his words. I um, hope we can get through it because he has a great message for us all. Uh, President Nelson designated this year as the a bicentennial, bicentennial period commencing, commence, commemorating the 200 years since God the Father and his beloved son Jesus Christ appeared on this earth to Joseph Smith in a vision. President Nelson invited us to make a personal plan to prepare ourselves for this historic conference. What are some of the things that you did to prepare for conference? I know I read through the uh, introductory part of the Book of Mormon and a, and a few other things. What did you do? Think in your mind the things that you did to prepare for conference. Um, perhaps you heard this message and, in, and wondered in what way is my part vital? Perhaps you read and prayed about the events of the Restoration. Perhaps more than ever you read the accounts of those few times when God the Father introduced his beloved Son. Perhaps you read the instances when he, when the Savior spoke to the children of our Heavenly Father. And perhaps after we have done this preparation and after listening to conference, we are more joyful, more optimistic, and more determined to serve in any capacity needed by the Lord. The, the events that we honored, the events that we honored were the beginning of the prophesied last dispensation in which the Lord was preparing his church and his people, those who bear his name to receive him. As part of our preparation for his coming, he will lift each of us so we may rise to spiritual challenges and opportunities unlike any seen in the history of this world. Now I'm going to quote, um, in September 1848, 1840, the prophet Joseph Smith and his counselors in the first presidency declared the following, and it's, it's pretty long and it's pretty deep, so just bear with me. Uh, the work of the Lord in these last days is one of the of vast magnitude and almost beyond the comprehension of mortals. Its glories are past description and its grandeur unsurpassable. It is the theme which has animated the bosom of prophets and righteous men from the creation of the world down through every succeeding generation to the present time. And it is truly the dispensation of the fullness of times when all things which are in Christ Jesus whether in heaven or the earth, shall be gathered together in him. And when all things shall be restored, as spoken of by the, all the holy prophets since the world began, for it will take place the glorious fulfillment of the promises made to the fathers, while the manifestations of the power of the Most High will be great, glorious, and sublime. They went on to say, We feel disposed to go forward un and unite our energies for the upbuilding of the kingdom and establishing the priesthood in their fullness and glory 
the work which has to be accomplished in the last days is one of vast importance and will call into action the energy, skill, talent, and ability of the saints so that it may roll forth with the glory and majesty described by the prophet Daniel and will consequently require the concentration of the saints to accomplish works of such magnitude and grandeur. Those were a lot of words and I would ask you to please take out the ensign or go online and read that quote and study it a little bit so that you can understand those words and let them seep into your heart. Um, it's pretty sobering that we are the generation that will usher in, well, generation, the dispensation that will usher in this, the Savior and his second coming. Uh, many of the specifics of what we will do and when we will do it in the unfolding of the restoration are not yet revealed. Yet the First Presidency, even in those early days, knew some of the breadth and depth of the work the Lord has set before us. Here are a few examples of what we do know will take place. Uh, through his saints, the Lord will offer the gift of his gospel to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Technology and miracles will continue to play a part, as will individual fishers of men who minister with power and increasing faith. Thus our continuing missionary efforts. We as a people will become more united and am amid increasing conflict. We will be gathered in the spiritual strength of groups and families filled with gospel light. Even an unbelieving world will recognize the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and realize the power of God upon it. Faithful and brave disciples will fearlessly, humbly, and openly take upon them the name of Christ in their everyday lives. How then can each of us participate in this work of such magnitude and grandeur? President Nelson has taught us how to grow in spiritual power. When we take repentance as a joyful opportunity because of our growing faith that Jesus is the Christ, when we understand and believe that Heavenly Father hears our every prayer, when we strive to obey and live the commandments, we grow in our power to receive continuing revelation. The Holy Ghost can be our constant companion. A feeling of light will stay with us even as the world around us becomes darker. Joseph Smith is an example of spiritual power. He showed us that the prayer of faith is the key to the revelation from God. He prayed in faith, believing that God the Father would answer his prayer. He prayed in faith, believing that only through Jesus Christ could he be freed from the guilt he felt from his sins. And he prayed in faith, believing that he needed to find the true church of Jesus Christ to gain that forgiveness. Throughout his prophetic ministry, Joseph Smith used prayers of faith to obtain continuous revelation. As we face today's challenges and those yet to come, we too will need to practice the same pattern. President Brigham Young said, I do not know any other way for the Latter-day Saints than for every breath to be virtually a prayer for God to guide and direct his people. And isn't that uh, so applicable to today? Um, then we think of the sacrament. Think of the words of the sacrament. Um, always remember him. Him refers to Jesus Christ. The next words, and keep my commandments, suggest that what it means for us to remember him. As we remember Jesus to always, we might ask in silent prayer, what would he have me do? Such prayer offered in faith in Jesus Christ ushered in this last dispensation, and it will be at the heart of the part each of us will play in his continued unfolding. Each of us will have a different part. We don't know what we will be asked to do or what our part will be. But if we have faith and use the prayer of faith, we will know. First Joseph Smith, he asked, first Joseph Smith asked in childlike faith what the Lord would have him do. His answer changed the history of the world. And these are things, uh, examples of uh, faithful prayer. And a quote from Brother Eyring, To me, an important lesson comes from Joseph's response to Satan's assault 
As Joseph knelt to pray, I know from experience that Satan and his servants try to make us feel that we must not pray. When Joseph Smith exerted all his powers to call upon God to deliver him from the power that tried to bind him, his prayer for relief was answered and Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ appeared. Satan's attempt to thwart the beginning of the restoration was so severe because Joseph's prayer was so important. You and I will have smaller parts to play in the ongoing restoration, yet the enemy of the restoration will try to stop us from praying. The example of Joseph's faith and his determination can strengthen us in our resolve. Another example of a faithful prayer that was answered is in the Book of Mormon. Enos uh, is another model for that type of prayer. Whatever your part will be in the restoration, you could take Enos as a personal mentor. Like Joseph, Enos prayed in faith. He described his experience this way. And my soul hungered, and I kneeled down before my Maker, and I cried unto him in mighty prayer and supplication for mine own soul. And all the day long did I cry unto him. Yea, and when the night came, I did still raise my voice high. It reached the heavens, and there came a voice unto me, saying, Enos, thy sins are forgiven thee, and thou shalt be blessed. And I, Enos, knew that God could not lie, wherefore my guilt was swept away. And I said, Lord, how is it done? And he said unto me, Because of thy faith in Christ, whom, hast not, whom thou hast never before heard nor seen, and many years pass away before he shall manifest himself in the flesh, wherefore go to, thy faith hath made thee whole. Joseph had faith in Christ to go into the grove and also to pray for the release of the power of the of the power of Satan. He had not yet seen the Father and the Son, but he prayed in faith with all the energy of his heart. And President Iring, the the president the experience of Enos has taught me the same precious lesson. When I pray in faith, I have the Savior as my advocate with the Father, and I can feel that my prayer reaches heaven. Answers come, blessings are received, there is a peace and joy in hard times. And again, quoting from President Eyring, our ability to make our vital contribution to the wonderful continuing restoration will increase as we grow in our faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior and our Heavenly Father, as our loving, in Jesus Christ as our Savior and our Heavenly Father, Father as our loving Father, as we pray in faith, we become a vital part in the Lord's work as he prepares the world for his second coming. I pray that we may find joy in doing the work he invites each of us to perform. Sisters, please do take out this lesson and read it and see what it applies to you as far as being prepared for the returning of our Savior, Jesus Christ. None of us know when that will be, but hopefully we will have contributed some portion to the hastening of his return to this earth. My prayers are with each one of you as we go through this distancing and being separated from each other and hope and pray that your prayers will be answered and that you will find comfort in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I say this in Jesus name. Amen. Heavenly Father, I am grateful for your eternal presence. I am learning to be patient and that you are really there. Sometimes I am afraid and I know that's lacking faith but i'm beginning to understand that for me you have a plan heavenly father i am grateful for you sending your son to die so that i and for never giving up I'm learning every day That I won't always have